ladies and gentlemen uh, there's a very 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 interesting question uh, you will see this all around right uh, in youtube and in so many other places uh, will my passion become my profession how to transform your passion into your profession that's a topic of some other day but from astrology how can we identify if you have certain combinations and certain placements which indicate that you can transform your passion into your profession and earn from it maybe part time maybe as a side hustle or maybe full time right or maybe even more than that that your passion does not only become your profession it becomes like your life path right so therefore there are uh, certain combinations which uh, can help us to identify because then uh, this can help uh, us during career consultations so when you are uh, giving consultations um, the first thing you should check is uh, forget about passion and all this the first thing you should check is what is the person comfortable doing because uh, if you check that then what happens is uh, the person will not feel overburdened in life when it comes to profession right otherwise if a person is doing something which uh, the person hates this abject hatred then the person can't do it for very long and even if the person does it uh, it won't be of very good quality right and even if it is uh, it can be very disturbing to the mental health of the person so therefore we should always check whenever we are giving a consultation we should always check in the horoscope what is the mindset of the person what is the thought process of the person what kind of a work uh, will the person like right so for example uh, in the vedic tradition we have the four varnas right so many times uh, when people hear the word varna uh, varna and ashrama they will link it to indian caste system right and they will say oh this idiot has come to speak on uh, class, caste system right and they will uh, spill all kinds of abuses well uh, the word varna is actually not referring to caste the word varna actually refers to our profession right because varna is basically the nature of a person and the person should be best engaged as per uh, his uh, or her uh, mindset and the outlook towards life right so for example if a person uh, if a person is a brahmana then what happens is brahmana means anybody who likes to study who likes to teach who likes to enlighten other people who likes to talk about different things uh, who likes to talk about uh, the overall picture the bird's eye view right and one who likes to uh, help others one who is very kind in general and then there are the chatriyas right so chatriyas they are the ones who like to free people from pain and suffering right and uh, they are the ones who can be a bit aggressive who likes to take the lead and make changes in society implements the law that's the primary job for chatriya and then there is there are the vaishyas right so the vaishyas are the ones who uh, are into business they can sell something it's like commodity right so they make something and they sell something right so <clears throat> so uh, the, and then there are shudras shudras are uh, Shudras are represented by those people who do not have any goal of life. Uh, their only, uh, their primary goal is just to exist and you know have some materialistic enjoyment. Um, and so they, they, for them, it's recommended that they uh, become employees and they serve one of uh, the other classes, right? So either uh, they assist a brahmana and or they assist a chatriya or they assist a vaishya or anybody, right? So. Therefore, depending on your nature of work, uh, it will be decided what you should be doing, right? So, for example, if your houses of education are very prominent, the fourth house, fifth house, ninth house uh, can be the second and the third also sometimes, then uh, you can be, uh, you, you could have more inspiration to do something which is Brahminical, like uh, become an online trainer or um, somebody like a teacher in a university or something like that so that then that's your primary job or to be like a consultant right and then if you're a chatriya you may be interested in IAS exams uh, like UPSC exams you might want to become an IAS officer or IPS officer or IFS officer or a, a judge or a lawyer or a politician right not not lawyer judge uh, or, or a politician because these are the people who have control over the law right 
so depending on the planets it will be decided and if you have prominent planets in the lagna and in the 10th you could be more interested in politics if you have prominent planets in the 6th and the 10th and the 11th you could be more interested into uh, bureaucracy like I is and uh, all this and if mars is involved then it could be ips if the third house ninth house and the 12th house are involved it could be ifs right indian foreign services and then there are other combinations for law and uh, judges and all this right and then if you um, if, if you are a businessman if you're a vaishya then also there are many combinations depending on which kind of profession it is right so therefore you have to understand that first we identify the person's nature because a person might have different kinds of uh, interests different passions but passion the problem with passion is it can uh, it can be temporary sometimes right like you can ask yourself when you were a child what if, if your teacher would ask you what would you like to become right or what are your passions what are your interests you might have said something which uh, you may not feel uh, you may not identify with something now right uh, it has happened with me i don't know if it has happened with you please let me know in the comments uh, when the teacher asked you raise your hands who wants to become a scientist who wants to become a uh, doctor engineer whoever wants to become a businessman right uh, so you said or maybe you said something totally fancy right but is it something which you really want to do now or is it something that you are doing now maybe not maybe yes maybe not or maybe to some extent but primarily or maybe you are just stuck in it <laughs> So either ways, passion can be temporary, right? But first you have to identify, is the person primarily a Brahmana, a Vaishya or a Kshatriya or a Shudra, right? Because a Brahmana will always uh, like to maintain peace and harmony, right? <clears throat> and a Kshatriya will always fight and get things done, very dominating nature sometimes, right? And a Vaishya is very calculative. He's always calculating. A Vaishya can think 10 kilometers ahead 10 steps ahead than anybody because the mind is like <laughs> the the vaishya is always calculating how can i make more money you know how can i get more money right of course uh, traditionally in the vedic culture the vaishyas would not just earn money they would like uh, do cow protection and all this right as lord krishna says in the gita so what does lord krishna say in the gita about uh, the brahmins uh, the chatriyas and the vaishyas and the shudras if you know Please write it down in the comments, which shloka does Lord Krishna say uh, about them, right? Their activities and their actions. I would be interested to see how many of you are aware of it. So once you identify the nature, then you got to see uh, the overall horoscope and the upcoming Mahadashas. So assuming a person is around 25 and he's coming and asking, you know, sir, please tell me, you know, what should be my profession? Will my, can I turn my passion into profession, right? Mm -hmm. So then you can look at his chart that for the upcoming uh, 20, 30. So if he's 25, then maybe till 65, right? Or at least till 60. So he or she has to have the fifth house associated in the upcoming Mahadashas, right? Somehow. Uh, either either the fifth lord has to be sitting either in uh, artha house like the sixth uh, the second sixth tenth or eleventh um, or the lords of these houses need to sit in the fifth house and their dasha has to run right so for example if a person suppose a person has a son mahadasha when he's like you know 25 maybe and then son is the fifth lord sitting in the tenth house for example so then what happens is uh, for those six years, the person will want to um, make a profession out of uh, his or her uh, passion, right? Because the fifth house is supporting. But suppose then Moon Mahadasha comes next, then Mars Mahadasha, seven years, then Rahu Mahadasha comes and Moon, Mars and Rahu, none of them are supporting uh, this because the fifth house is not associated, right? Then what happens? Then after six years, the person will be in an identity crisis, right? Then the person will feel, oh, maybe my you know passion is not making me that much money. So maybe I, I will go and do something which everybody else is doing, like you no know, doctor, engineer, or lawyer, professor, something like that. 
so you have so in that situation you have to tell the person that my dear sir maybe it's not a great idea for you to leave your job currently and go into this passion full time as a profession what you could do is you could continue your job maybe that job could be like a part time job which pays your bills and this you could do as a side business as a side hustle right because many times people will ask you should i quit my job and do or what should i do right but now if you see that sun moon mars rahu these four planets because they will consume his entire lifetime they are somehow linked with the fifth house the fifth lord is aspecting them or they are uh, aspecting the fifth house or um, they are aspecting planets like uh, i mean uh, mercury and venus are somehow associated because these are rajasic planets and they give desire and also the fifth house has to be linked right and uh, if they are sitting primarily in the powerful houses like the 10th or 11th then you can say that you can make your passion into profession for this rest of this life because your upcoming mahadashas are indicating these house this these houses placements conjunctions and planets right now otherwise uh, the person may end up in an identity crisis right when moon dasha begins for example and along with this you always have to analyze certain things like you know you have to see the power of the ninth lord and you have to see the power of jupiter because jupiter gives hope and optimism like the ninth lord gives you good uh, teachers right so it can happen that maybe the person has started sun mahadasha and moon mahadasha and then when mars mahadasha comes it could happen that this person can feel a bit lost or a person might feel a bit left out right now uh, because the person is not able to figure out how to take the business to the next level right so then you have to see the, is the person blessed in the horoscope by gurus and especially in that dasha right uh, because otherwise at the age of 40 or 45 the person may again end up in identity crisis like or other mid life crisis <laughs> so therefore you got to check jupiter and the ninth lord and the most important planet that you need to check of course is the fifth lord in the kalpurush kundli which is none other than the naisargik atmakarak surya sun himself because sun is the significator of the soul and passion is a signification uh, which comes from the soul the fifth house and jupiter is the karaka for the fifth house right so jupiter and sun are something which you must see right and along with that as i said the planets mercury and venus which put desire which are rajasic planets right which wants to uh, maintain a independent uh, entity that is something which you must check right and along with all these planets if the lagna lord joins then what happens is this does not remain a profession this becomes like the goal of life for a person right so if the lagna lord is somewhere else he is not interested in this conjunction or in these dashas he is not linked right he is completely somewhere else doing something else so the person will have a different life path but his passion will become his profession okay but imagine a person has some, some combinations like the fifth lord in 10th and the lagna lord in the fifth so then it's like lifetime uh, process for the person it's not just a career for you know earning name fame money power position authority no it is something which the person will breathe in and out if the lagnesh is involved right and along with that if the moon is also involved the person will be very happy doing it have you seen people uh, who are pursuing their uh, passion as their profession but uh, they are not very happy sometimes right for for any reason right or they are not as happy as they thought they would have been so this is this could be if the moon is not involved so when the moon is not linked then what happens is um, you get these hyper desires but mentally you are not ready for it right so then what happens you understand that i am doing something but maybe mentally i am not very much into it right intellectually i like it but mentally at an emotional level i cannot connect so then that could be a challenge for you to do for the rest of your life right so so in a sense there are some principles but you need to check the entire horoscope and the upcoming mahadashas there is no one major sutra don't say fifth lord in 10th or fifth lord in 6th or fifth lord in 11th or fifth lord in 2nd can uh, make a passion into profession do not say that it will lead to a blunder because what if 
that Mahadasha of the fifth lord is not coming, right? And what if it comes somewhere in the 40s? Imagine somebody gets Sandasha for six years in their 40s, right? So, so it's like a precarious situation because then suddenly in the 40s, the person will feel that, oh, I need to leave everything that I did from the last 20 years and then I need to start something on my own. But then the problem is, that's only for six years, right? So then how do you deal, deal with it, right? What do you tell the person? Should you suggest the person uh, to uh, go into the passion full-time or should you suggest the person that no, do it part-time because after six years, you will again feel I need to go back to my old job. What should I do? So it's a complicated situation, right? So then you have to talk with the person. You have to discuss how much money do you have for your retirement for your old age for your son and daughter's education for their marriage uh, do you have a home do you have a car do you have this much bank balance what do you have even if after six years if everything crumbles and you crash will you still have the money to survive so you have to give some financial consulting where have they invested their money where in stable assets risky assets right or in real estate or in cryptocurrency wherever so it depends right so Therefore, uh, it is also good for astrologers to know a bit about um, other things in life, right? Uh, apart from just apart from astrology. So, like one of the most important things for an astrologer to know is uh, financial planning, because then the astrologer can suggest a good plan. Not not an expert in financial planning, but if, if for example, if a person has a very prominent tenth house or a very prominent eleventh house, then the person can invest money in risky assets and get gain a lot of get a lot of returns because that's his destiny, right? On the other hand, if a person has uh, precarious planets or precarious placements, right, uh, like the sixth, eighth, and twelfth, so then uh, the person should be advised to invest money in uh, stabler assets, right? Uh, otherwise, the person will lose all the money, right? And then there are different asset classes like gold, real estate, right? So then which planet signifies what? Shani and Mangal, they signify real estate, right? Sun, Jupiter, they signify uh, gold and yeah, Venus signifies silver. So you, you got to know about basics of finances and, you know, basics of human relationships, basics of psychology and uh, yeah, basics of uh, health, you know, basics of Ayurveda. So these are certain things which an astrologer should know. Otherwise, what happens is you just give them an astrological consultation and then it doesn't help. You know, it's just mere predictions. It's not consulting, right? There's a very big difference between giving a prediction-based consultation, which is actually very easy sometimes, and to give a consultation which actually helps the person overall, holistically, not just give some fancy years Oh, at the age of 33, this will happen. Tera pentalis mein bhagya no, 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 that, that doesn't make sense because that's anyways going to happen, right? You tell them about predictions, but you give them a life path. That is the best way to give a consultation. Give them a life path. Give them a consultation by which even if they come to you for a career reading, they should be able to get some guidance overall, holistically, by which they feel that Oh, my married life has also improved. My health has also improved, right? Because imagine they come to you for a career consultation and you say, oh, yeah, yeah, you will get this very nice opportunity abroad and then go and settle there, right? But what will happen to their parents? What will happen to their spouse? What will happen to their children? What will happen to uh, the person's health? Maybe the health will suffer after going there, right? So then after going there, uh, he's going to curse you. Oh, this astrologer told me to come here. I'm making money, but my health is very bad, right? So why to unnecessarily get curses of people, right? Anyways, uh, we will always gain some curses uh, if you, if we are into astrology because we cannot satisfy everybody, right? But at least we should try our best to satisfy whoever comes to us for a consultation. And along with that, most importantly, give a roadmap, give a um, path for the person's life which elevates him or her materially, financially, spiritually, uh, monetarily, right? And all from all perspectives, from a society and most importantly, spiritually, right? That is something which we should never miss, irrespective of the fact that we are able to make a, our passion into profession or not, right? 
thank you very much for your patience and uh, god is there with you he will help you to make your passion uh, into profession hopefully if the horoscope supports <laughs> If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation from me regarding if you can make your profession uh, out of your passion, then please go to my website down in the description section. All right. Thank you very much.